Horses on the track for the first non-betting event here. Again, just an early race. Overnight event purse of $7,000. What is swinging Jetty? Matt Stevens trains for Banda Stevens. Andy McCarthy drives. Number two is Sun Capay. Tom Rick Roberts owns and trains with Joe Bongiorno. Three is Aiden Ivy. Ron Burke trains for Hinchcliffe Racing. Dexter Dunn. The four is Sugar Island. Mark Evers owns trains and drives. Number five is Proof. Brian Brown trains. Tim Tietrich up for Diamond Creek Racing. And number six, Charmo Blitz. Man Hughes trains for Shomiri Douglas. Jabal Denson at the controls. That should be for the first race. They will take a quick turn, head directly to the starting gate. We've got a couple of non-betting early races today. Again, they will head directly to the starting gate for the first of two non-betting events. It is post time at the first non betting event here to kick off the uh, Sunday festivities. Condition Pacers lined up a, a field of six. They're on game. And they are off and uh, pacing. Sit of the track, Sugar Island uh, shoots out early. Aiden Ivy also left the uh, gate well with Sun Capay. Towards the inside as they sprint into that opening turn, Sugar Island, the uh, set of large chip, takes over the uh, top here with Aiden Ivy in pursuit second. Sun Capay out racing in third. Proof is uh, next fourth. Swinging Jenny follows in fifth. And at the uh, back, that is Charmo Blitz. Straight alignment around the uh, Tattersaw's turn, Sugar Island. It is a 100th career start. He's past the quarter, 28 and 2. And he maintains a, a three length margin from Aiden Ivy, who holds down second. Sun Capade right now, seven lengths off the uh, top third. Proof under Bay, a snug hold in fourth. Swinging Jetty still followed again fifth in front of Charmbo Blitz. Strung out group on the uh, back stretch as Sugar Island continues to pave the way. He's too clear of Aiden Ivy. No change in position. Sun Capade. Tightens down the hatches, third, still five links off the top in front of Proof. It's a gap of five to swinging Jetty as Charmbo Blitz moved to the outside, but he's yet to uh, make much of an impact. They race past the half here in 55 and four, 27 and two in the uh, second quarter. Sugar Island carries that speed under the far turn with three eighths to go. Aiden Ivy still in tight pursuit, second there for Dunn. Sun Cabade is at the inside third. Now Proof is underway to the outside and Proof quickly uh, Gaining ground there. It's a proof up to engage Sugar Island as they approach the top of the stretch. Aiden Ivy back off the cones third in front of Sun Capade fourth. Three quarters up 124 and two. And proof is quickly taken over the lead and he looks to power away. Sugar Island still second with Aiden Ivy. Driven out from a third. Sun Capade is fourth. They reach mid stretch. Proof is angled clear. Sugar Island trying to fight back towards the inside. Aiden Ivy is third. Proof is wrapped up though. Proof. Dive at a deer, a measured win at the line. 
Sugar Island second, 893rd. Sun Capade fourth, 151. Proof takes the first nine. Betty Gavitt here to kick off the Sunday action. Brian Brown, the trader. Tim Tiedrick was in the bike for the wedding effort for Diamond Creek Racing, Wellsville, Pennsylvania. Proof a former Pennsylvania sire stakes champion. He was bred by the Diamond Creek Farm of Pennsylvania. He is a four-year-old based dad. He is by a rock and roll dance from the real artist mayor, Ginger and Fred Proof. Picks up his second of the season, 10th overall, nearing in on a half million dollars at his career. 151, a season's best effort for proof.
Horse is on the uh, track for the second non-betting event here. Overnight uh, non-better to uh, prior to today's card. What is Rock Idol? Marta Sheehan trains for Karen Sheehan, Amanda Stevens, and Janie Hartley. Andy McCarthy drives. Number two is Call Girl. Don Brock trains for Mary Brock and Bertram Wilson. Jabal Dudson drives. Three, Good Time and Cam. Matt Stevens trains for Amanda Stevens. Joe Bongiorno. The four is Six Day Wars. Don Brock owns and trains. Dexter Dunn. Number five is Melancholy Rose. Marta Sheehan trains for David Brown, Tim Tietrick. And there is number six, Fox Valley Oscar. Jimmy Watson trains for Jerry Blount, Jeremy Bobbitt. Will drive. That's your feel for the second non-betting event. They'll take a quick turn. They'll spin right to the starting gate. Once again, a pair of non-betting events to begin today's action. Of course, the first post for the regular betting card remains at 1 p.m. Green Foundation starting gate has moved into position. It's post time for the second non-betting event here. Starter calls. Horses lined up for the second Don betting event here. Kick off the Sunday action, a field of six there on game. At the ball, there goes Fox Valley Oscar from the far outside, Rock Idol. Out alertly towards the inside, those two square off into the opening turn. It's Rock Idol, who sweeps right on through down at the inside. Call Girl out quickly to attract that. Fox Valley Oscar will dive into the third spot in six day wars. Floats up and around. Good time in Cam. And at the back, that's Melancholy Rose. They circle the opening turn. Rock Otto, the uh, set of rocket image on the uh, point. Call Girl. Tracking closely at this point, second. Fox Valley Oscar continues to ride in third. The quarter was up in 29 seconds. Six day wars at the inside, fourth. Six links off the top in front of Good Time and Cam. And at the back, that's Melancholy Rose. No change in position as they make their way past the uh, 3 8 mark. Rock Otto. Getting plenty of respect on the uh, point is Call Girl. Sticks with the leader second, Fox Valley Oscar, still following in the third spot. Nothing yet from Six Day Wars. Good time and camp remains in fifth, and Melton Cotley Rowe is still last. The race past the half in 57 into three, 28 and three in the second quarter. It's still Rock Otto, who's uncontested, and he carries that speed onto the far turn. A perfect trip second for Call Girl. As she continues right there with three eights to pace. Fox Valley Oscar will swing wide now from a third six day wars. To the outside to follow that move in fourth. 
Good time and Cam shoots C.A. Gap dead at the inside fifth in front of Melancholy Rose. Rock Idol starts to get some separation. He's throttled out to a three-length lead. Call Girl could not stay with him in second. Fox Valley Oscar begins to stall third. That'll send six-day wars three wide fourth. They're off three quarters, 126 and two, and it's still Rock Idol maintaining a four-length margin. Six Day Wars rallies up on the far outside with Call Girl trying to hang in down the center, but it's all Rock Idol. He's wrapped up here. Rock Idol will win it easily here. Rock Idol takes it. Time for the place. Call Girl held that spot from Six Day Wars. Fox Valley Oscar fourth, 153 and four. Good afternoon, racing fans, and welcome in for our third program of the season for Grand Circuit Action 2020 here at the historic Red Mile. We'll go through your changes and your programming notes in a couple of moments. At this time, we'd ask you to please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
And once again, good afternoon and welcome in for our third Grand Circuit program of the season here in downtown Lexington, Kentucky at the Red Mile. Beautiful weather conditions here today. We are under partly cloudy skies in the 60s for today's 15 race program. We'll make the changes quite easy for you. There are no changes at this time on the 15 race program. We do have a couple of the programming notes for you. Note a pick five carryover in the second race, $5,710. We've added a $20,000 guaranteed pool to the second race pick five. We've got a $10,000 guaranteed pick four. That'll get underway in race number seven. Low takeout there as well, just 15%. We've added on a special late pick four this afternoon. That gets underway in race number 12. And again, at this time, no changes on your Sunday program. Hey, once again, good afternoon. Welcome in. I am Gabe Pruitt. Please, as always, to be joined by my good friend and a partner, Dave Brower. Dave, another beautiful day. We were worried about the weather. Uh, we were, and, you know, there is rain imminent at some point, hopefully later into the evening after we complete this magnificent 15 race card that was put together by our Grand Circuit Racing Secretary, Tom Agosti. People have been licking their chops since the entry uh, sheet came out a couple of days ago. We've got the true stars in the sport going to perform with us today. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Again, we just want to remind everybody that you can come on out to the Red Mile here. We've got 500 spots available each and every day, owners and fans and betters. We always want the betters. The clubhouse dining is open. You and I got to sample a little bit of that a little while ago, and it was excellent. Yo, I think we did more than sample. <laughs> we enjoyed a, a nice lunch over in the clubhouse, so uh, come on out and check it out. Again, 500 fans here on a daily basis. That'll be next week as well. Clubhouse dining, very, very impressive. Yes, very impressive. We even got to meet the chef there, so congratulations to Chef Jeff. We hope uh, you get a lot more patrons, uh, at least today and into next week. Now, listen, in case you missed it, big news in the harness racing world last night up at Dayton, Ohio. Three big derbies. The stars are on view there. And a couple of track record type performances, starting with Kissing in the Sand, who upended the horse of the year. Yeah, it was an incredible effort. Uh, off cover there, 149, I believe, equal to track record, day, But uh, impressive. We know Kissing in the Sand is a top-shelf uh, mare, and uh, she did not disappoint. Yeah, trainer Nancy Tactor obviously has her very, very sharp again. The Dayton Trotting Derby in a romp for Atlanta, establishing a new track record. Yeah, and a very similar setup for Atlanta. She just vaulted uh, off cover and uh, easily spread it away. I was, uh, of course, we were always impressed by Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, Yannick Jingra talking in the winner's circle afterwards about how much she likes to race from behind, and she just gets airborne late, and it's impossible to uh, hold her off. The Dayton Pacing Derby, that saw a lot of hot and heavy action up front, but I thought it was nice to see Better's Wish Bounce back to winning form for Chris Ryder and Dexter Dunn. Dancing Lou was second. Teed up perfectly there in that uh, race. It was nice to see they put up 10,000 to put the three-year-old yeah. in there, and they uh, they went down swinging. <laughs> they took their shot. Dan Noble and Ocean Rock, they cut the pace. They met some good pressure on the final turn, and eventually he did give way. He's, it, it was a tough, tall order for a three-year-old to tackle those free-for-all type pacers, and uh, it just didn't work out. Yeah, it was a, a valiant effort, though, and uh, he did dial up some quick fractions there. We had a lot of big efforts here yesterday as well, though. We Dave. did. Uh, big performances here. Seven bluegrass divisions, and it was a lucky seven for top two-year-old pacing colt. And the top two-year-old pacing colt in training, perfect thing. I was so, uh, I thought it was incredible the way that he just spread it away late. Uh, that was a nice colt, uh, Cooper Sumlaud, that... Uh, was in behind him there of the uh, Burke trade. But uh, as soon as Dave Miller asked Perfect Sting, he really responded. That's what caught my eye there, the final eighth of a mile or so. Yeah, we talked to Joe Holloway in the winter circle afterwards, and he said this right from the get-go. He said, this colt is still learning. He doesn't really know what racing is all about. But when he sees another horse, he has the gameness to uh, dig in and win. Also a big day for the Burke Brigade as they captured multiple divisions of the freshman pacing colts for the second year in a row. Lose Perlman and Southwind Gendry. Lose Perlman just a fifth of a second off the uh, world record. He got teed up perfectly there, Dave. Those quick early fractions. I believe the half was 52 and four. Vaulted off cover. I was impressed with them. Southwind Gendry uh, as well. Uh, it's going to be, uh, there's a lot yeah. of talent at the top uh, end of that two-year-old pacing class. Can't wait till how they fit out in the draw next week for the International Stallion Stakes. We hope some of those top performers get in the same race. The connections don't, but we as fans do. <laughs> yes, of course we do, and uh, it's going to be a huge second week here in Lexington. It will be. Always, you know, looking forward to that. The weather forecast looks great, you know, in advance. 
But listen, today again, 12 stake, straight stakes races as part of the 15 race card, uh, featuring all of the divisions for the uh, sophomores, the three-year-olds today. Highlight divisions, though, we got to get to these two stars. In the 11th race, we get to see Tall Dark Stranger, winner of the North America Cup, winner of the Meadowlands Face, winner of the Kentucky Sire Stakes, winner of the Cane. Can't wait to see him. He's got the rail. Yeah, that uh, looks like a good spot for him here this afternoon. The Tall Dark Stranger, we always look forward to seeing him in action. So impressive here at the Kentucky Sire Stakes uh, as well. And one race later, the queen of the trotting world right now. That is Hamiltonian champion Ramona Hill for Tony Alanya and Andy McCarthy, though. A little bit of a tough post today, but a lot of the favorites yesterday overcame the outside post. She's so two-fingered and perfect to drive. I don't. She could win from anywhere out on the racetrack. And as many people know, this track is so fair, Dave. You know, you can close on the track, front end horses uh, as well. It's just a fair track. I think it plays as fair as any track in North America, and that's what we like to see. So uh, we'll see the tactics today from Mona Hill. She obviously was a stakes winner here last year as well. Yes, she was, and uh, she loves the track. And again, she's been so incredibly impressive uh, throughout the season, including I think she's getting better even after her Hamiltonian triumph. Lots of great betting action, of course, on the car today, including several wagers that include that low 15% takeout. Highlighted by the $10,000 guaranteed pick four in race seven. We've had some good payoffs the first few days of the meet, and your favorite word we have a pick five carryover pick you got your you got your ticket ready i have got my ticket in not oh, ready <laughs> it is loaded and sent at this point and i do want to pass along we do have a, a late scratch in that sequence in the fifth race we're going to scratch the seven sea of life so that uh, will be your only change here this afternoon yeah we did have a little uh, excitement just about a half an hour ago that horse got loose out on the racetrack so of course he's going to be scratched uh, back to the alanya armada and he will live to race another day yes he will walked off on his own accord so that was a little uh, Pre-game excitement. excitement. Yeah, yes. yeah. Everybody, everybody got out of their seat, riled up. He was rolling around here about 100 miles an hour with the jog cart on. Hopefully, he is okay. Well, we'll have plenty of interviews, of course, throughout the day, weather permitting, and I get to talk to one of my favorite people in the business. That is Michelle Crawford of the Crawford Farms. We're also going to talk to uh, Blue Chip Farms uh, master Tom Grossman at that point. We may catch up with Adam Bowden of Diamond Creek Farms. We've got so many stakes races today. We're trying to slot everybody in there. We want to we want to have everybody talk about the sale, actually, before it starts. Of course, it starts tomorrow over at the Fazig Tipton uh, Pavilion. So, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are joining us from home or at a simulcast center or on RTN.TV, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the very best in harness racing right here at the Red Mile. I peer over, seven minutes to post here. No time for our picks, but of course, we will talk about them extensively throughout the afternoon after the post parade. Look forward to that. It's going to be another great day. A few extra minutes, I can send a few more pick five plays, so it's okay with me. <laughs> You on your phone, when I see you on that phone, it's amazing, I tell you. You, you, you do great work, and I just, I just listen and watch and try to learn something. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it turns out, but we will be in action. We hope you will be as well. We wish you the best of luck here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon at the Red Mile. and our promise to breed the best and sell the best so you can race the best. Crawford Farms, home to this year's 2020 Hamiltonian Philly champion, Ramona Hill. Andrew McCarthy finds today, Ramona, oh, Ramona Hill takes the Hamiltonian. And over a hundred more stakes-winning broodmares, racehorses, and retirees. They call it the sport of kings. We call it the love of champions. From our farm to the winner's circle, share our passion. Crawford Farms. This is the tale of Father Patrick, the standard bearer of a proud lineage, with a legacy of victory and glory all his own. His legend continues to grow. 
Father Patrick in control. He does it again. He wins by two and a half wings. Father Patrick, Father Patrick with a Breeders' Crown. Be a part of the legend of Father Patrick, now at Diamond Creek Farm. By French superstar stallion Love You, out of the greatest trotting mare of all time, Moneymaker. International Money bred full books in both of his initial seasons. His foals are uniformly good size with good length, good bone, and conformation. It's very easy to see the much sought after European influence of Love You in these foals. Follow up on these impressive crops with a booking to the ultimate Euro American stallion, International Money, standing at Hanover Shoe Farms. Harris Hoosier Park invites you to an exclusive opportunity to bid on a 2021 breeding of the top six stallions in harness racing as part of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge. The breedings will be auctioned off at the 2020 Lexington Select Yearling Sale on October 6th at 6.45 p.m. at the Fanzig Tipton Sales Pavilion. All proceeds of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge will be donated to charity. Join us in person or bid online at www.lexingtonselected.com. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers on the track for the first division of the Captain Treacherous Bluegrass Series worth $67,600. The Bardo changes what is see you at the beach. Ron Burke trains for the Burke Racing Stable. Weaver Brew Chevy, Purnell Libby, and Kinefield Stable, Dexter Dunn drives. Number two, Sand Between My Toes, Jim Campbell trains for the Fashion Farms LLC, Scott Zeron. Three, Save Me a Dance, Andrew Harris trains for Bob Key with Todd McCarthy. The four is Captain Kirk, Tony Gabagna trains, Joe Bongiorno drives for the Brittany Farms, Marvin Katz, Brad Grant, and Captain Kirk racing. Five, Muddy Man Hill, Carbonacci other trains, Andy McCarthy in the bank for Fox Racing Incorporated, Percy Elkins and Aaron Waxman. Number six is Cattle Wash, Ron Burke trains for Bill Donovan, Dave Miller. And seven is Later Dudes, Nancy Tactor, the trader for Country Club Acres, Joe Spronco. The Acadia Farms, JCK2 Properties, Brett Miller is at the lines. That's your field for the first race. Get no changes. Kicks off the early double. First division of the Captain Treacherous for the three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. The first of 12 consecutive stakes here on a Sunday afternoon. All right, Gabe Pruitt, thank you very much. We've got the uh, sophomore Pacers out on the track for our first of 12 stakes events on the afternoon here. And what a glorious day it is in Lexington, Kentucky here. It's not too cool like it was the last few days. A couple uh, more degrees, maybe we'll hit the mid-60s, uh, which would make for the ideal uh, racing conditions. A field of seven glamour boys out on the track here. And uh, let's begin with a horse that raced very well in the elimination and final of the Little Brown Jug literally a week ago. It's number two, Sand Between My Toes for Scott Zeron and Jim Campbell here. Sometimes, Gabe, as handicappers, you and I know two heats can take a little something out of a horse. Will he be ready today? Well, that's the uh, major question, Dave. That was my concern on the two Sand Between My Toes, particularly uh, when you consider what that battle was like in that second heat of the jug. Now, the first heat, uh, he just went three wide zip past a pretty easy win there. I didn't think that would take too much out of him, but uh, he did get in that early battle with Catch the Fire. 
uh, going for the lead there, of course, in the uh, final, and uh, that trip ultimately took its toll a bit. Two heats right back uh, on short rest. We'll see. Nine to five right now. Uh, on sand between my toes. Another horse that raced in Delaware last week for the Burke Brigade was number one CU at the beach. Recently moved into the Burke Brigade, and uh, when we got to talk to Mickey Burke Jr. at one point, he was alluding to radical equipment changes. Well, I know one thing. We saw wicked, wicked speed in the elimination, and then he was able to take back in the final and I guess just keep up. He, he probably was sapped from that elimination effort. Yeah, it's always great to hear Roddy discuss those types of uh, changes. Always a great interview, including uh, right here yesterday with <laughs> us uh, after a big win. See you at the beach. Uh, you know, he really took his shot in that uh, first seat of the jug. Uh, quick fractions, had the rail. That's, I guess, what you're supposed to do if you've got some speed there from that inside post to Delaware. Catch the fire got past him, but uh, still a valiant effort to be second. Just sort of even in that second heat, but um, similar question, Dave. Two heats. He did go a very big trip at the first heat there. How will he Bounce back uh, today. Yeah, I think he would uh, appreciate a follow trip today, but it's not my horse, and we will see how Dexter Dunn decides to drive him. Your top pick, number four, Captain Kirk for uh, Tony Alanya and company here. Second time Lasix, raced well in that Kentucky Sire Stakes final, but I tell you what, when you look over the past performances of this horse, Gabe, I see an awful lot of defeats the tall, dark stranger. Thank God he's not in here. We'll see him later today. We will see him later. I believe Viva's the only horse to defeat the Tall Dark Stranger. Had tip to our man Nick Salvi on that uh, note. Captain Kirk, uh, but you just can't hold those losses to Tall Dark Stranger against him, obviously. He's been a horse that's been knocking on the door right at the top levels. Uh, David, I thought uh, particularly when you've got a couple of these logical contenders coming out of those two heat jug races, I thought Captain Kirk, maybe from a fresh standpoint, could be the horse. Second time Lasix, a set of Captain Treacherous here, five to two. I will give him a swing here uh, to kick off the action. You gave a little love to number five, Money Man Hill, for Carmen Osiello and Andy McCarthy. And you're not the only one, unless you told everybody, he's taking some serious toad action. You know, I thought he would leave here, David. I thought he would just uh, trip out, sit close, and I thought he could parlay that type of trip. Uh, for the win price, 4-1, to one, that does seem awfully short. Uh, I'm not thrilled with that number uh, up top, but I do think he's the type of horse that could trip out today and finish somewhere in the mix. The other colt that raced extremely well up in Delaware has an outer post today. That's the horse on your screen right now, Cattle Wash and Hall of Fame driver Dave Miller here. He overcame two post sevens. That's almost impossible to do under that situation, and he was coming at the end of that uh, jug final there, just couldn't quite catch Captain Barbosa. You know, he couldn't have been any better. I don't think they're at the uh, jug. Those are the two best starts uh, for my money that uh, we've seen all year from Cattle Wash. That first trip, uh, it doesn't look that bad on paper day, but as I'm sure you recall as well, he tried to leave the gate from post seven. Uh, he was forced to uh, sort of abort mission at the first turn, so he had to uh, grab leather there, restrain him all the way back to last. Still came back, pacing on to be fourth there to sneak into the final. Of course, that didn't do him any favors. He had to draw for one of the outter posts. Uh, but in the uh, final, he left there, got in front of his stable mate, uh, attacked and uh, finished a good rudder up there and behind a, a dead game captain, Barbosa. A uh, cattle wash, again, the question is going to be what do those two heats take out of them, but uh, th that was a season's best day, I thought, for cattle wash. Number seven to the outside, Brett Miller going to be aboard later dudes for Nancy Tactor, and Nancy had that big win with Kissing in the Sand last night in the Distaff Pacing Derby. Later dudes, I thought he raced well in his elimination of the jug, but Dave Miller had him in perfect position, maybe could have finished a little bit better, and then in the final, you know, when you draw an outside post uh, and you get into the flow, and if it's not going forward, you, you have no chance. Yeah, I agree. I just don't know how he gets worked into this race today. He's going to have a similar problem, I think, because he's got a lot of early speed inside of him. Uh, he would need a, a quick pace scenario, possibly, to pick up some of the pieces late. All right, Gabe on number four, Captain Kirk. I'll take the two, sand between my toes, hoping he is ready. And the fans going to make this one close. Right now, the slight favorite at 8-5 to five is Scott Zeron's sand between my toes. First half of the Daily Double here. Don't forget, we've got that pick five carryover coming up starting in race two. Dream Foundation starting eight, moving into position. It's post time. The Sunday opener. First division of the Captain Treacherous. Triple millionaire, two-time pacer of the year. Captain Treacherous down the sports leading pacing side. North America.
shot are gone. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers lined up at the first division of the Captain Treacherous Bluegrass Series. One seed with the beach was off stride briefly. He's back pacing, but about 10 off the gate. Rebating six off set. And they are off. Muddy Mad Hill sprints out early from the center. Catawash left out next door. So those two out together as they sprint into the opening turn. And Catawash. Fresh off a rudder-up finish in the uh, Little Brown Junk. He takes over the uh, top from Muddy and Mad Hill. Bonjour to aggressive with Captain Kirk. He's already out on the uh, move and attacking early. Sand between my toes. I'd heard the early stages fourth. Save me a dance out giving Chase fifth in front of the later dudes. And at the uh, sluggish beginning, see you at the beach. Can uh, see them all through an opening quarter in 27 seconds. At a two to one, the uh, second choice, Captain Kirk has taken over the uh, top from Catawash. Who now tracks in second? Muddy Manhill rides in the third spot. Sand between my toes. Still patient at this point. Fourth, he's mid pack. In front of Save Me a Dance. Later, dudes. Continues to track sixth in front of See You at the Beach. Single file here. Pass a half mile mark. 53 and 3. 26 and 3 in that second quarter. So Captain Kirk dialing up a quick tempo, but he continues to uh, pave the way onto the far turn. Catawash. Continues to track second. Muddy Mad Hill rides third with three-eighths to pace. Sand between my toes. He begins to fade out from fourth. He's five links off the top. In front of the long shot, save me a dance. Later dude swings wide from sixth. And see you at the beach. We'll try and shoot the uh, gap. Captain Kirk looking to bottom out the field. He's on top through three quarters in one twenty and three. Cattle wash. The fresh red now up and out of the uh, pocket. Sand between my uh, toes works in down the center third. Four outside. That's save me a dance. Cattle wash has taken over from Captain Kirk. Sand between my toes continues to inch in. Four outside. Save me a dance. But it's Cattle wash who's pounced here. And he has sprinted well clear. Cattle wash won it easily. It won 46 and four. Cattle wash equals the world record. Judges have posted the six cattle wash at officially first, second to the four, Captain Kirk. Three, save me a dance third, two, sand between my toes, fourth. Six, four, three, two, at officially in the opener. Cattle Wash going to uh, join some rare air with that wet. He equals the world record of the late great Sun Beach somewhere, which was established right here at the Red Mile, September of 2008. 146 and four for Cattle Wash.
Returning tracks on to the uh, Diamond Creek Farm Wetter's presentation. This is Catawash. Now a world champion, Ron Burke, the uh, treader. Dave Miller was aboard for the uh, wedding effort this afternoon. Bill Donovan, the owner and breeder of Catawash of Delray Beach. Catawash, a three-year-old bay colt. He's by some beach somewhere. He just equaled his sire's world record today. He's from the Better's the Nightmare road bet. Catawash wins for the third time this season. Seventh overall, 146 and four for Catawash. Greeting the Uweta Connections track side. Steve Head to make the uh, trophy presentation. Steve uh, recently into the business. Our bad Myron Bell. Brought Steve along and enjoying ownership in several great standard breads these days. Catawash has a sister of the upcoming Lexington Select Yearling Sale. Hip 156 at Always Be Mickey. Sister to the world champion, Catawash. He equals the world record here that was established at the Red Mile by Sun Beach somewhere. Also a world record that was equaled in the uh, Meadowlands 2014 by He's Watching. So Catawash now joins that duo as a, a world champion. And again, he's got a always be Mickey's sister, the upcoming Lexington Select Yearling Sale, hip 156. A homebred here for Bill Donovan. Catawash returns 580, $3.260. Second to the four, Captain Kirk, 320 and 260. Third to the three, Save Me a Dance, 940. The exact to $20.40, $1 trifecta, $254.50. 20 cents superfecta, $166.50. Official rundowns for the first race, one see you at the beach, seventh, two send between my toes, fourth, three Save Me a Dance, third. Four Captain Kirk, second, five Muddy Mad Hill, sixth, six Cattle Wash the Race winner, and seven Later Dudes, fifth. Rechecking time down again, that's 7, 4, 3, 2, 6, 1, and 5. And note that to always be Mickey's sister, hip 156 in the upcoming Lexington Select Sale, part of the preferred equine consignment. Second race up next in six minutes. And Hill sprints out early from the center, Catawash. Left out next door, so those two out together as they sprint into the opening turn, and Catawash. Fresh off a runner-up finish in the uh, Little Brown Junk. He takes over the uh, top from Muddy and Matt Hill. Bonjour aggressive with Captain Kirk. He's already out on the uh, move and attacking early. Sand between my toes. I'd heard the early stages fourth. Save me a dance out giving Chase fifth in front of the later dudes. And after the uh, sluggish beginning, see you at the beach. Can uh, see them all through an opening quarter in 27 seconds. At a two to one, the uh, second choice, Captain Kirk has taken over the uh, top from Catawash. Who now tracks in second. Muddy Mad Hill rides in the uh, third spot. Sand between my toes. Still patient at this point. Fourth, he's mid-pack. In front of Save Me a Dance. Later Dudes continues to track sixth in front of See You at the Beach. Single file here. Pass a half mile mark. 53 and 3. 26 and 3 in that second quarter. So Captain Kirk dialing up a quick tempo, but he continues to uh, pave the way out of the far turn. Catawash. Continues to track second. Muddy Matt Hill rides third with three-eighths to pace. Sand between my toes. He begins to fade out from fourth. He's five links off the top. In front of the long shot, save me a dance. Later dude swings wide from sixth. And see you at the beach. We'll try and shoot the uh, gap. Captain Kirk looking to bottom out the field. He's on top through three quarters and one twenty and three. Cattle wash. The fresh red now up and out of the uh, pocket. Sand between my uh, toes works in down the center third. Four outside. That's save me a dance. Cattle wash has taken over from Captain Kirk. Sand between my toes continues to inch in. Four outside. Save me a dance, but it's Cattle Wash who's pounced here. He has sprinted well clear. Cattle Wash won it easily. It when you need supplies for your horse, one name stands out Big D's. 
Since 1974, Big D's Tack and Vet Supply has been the equine expert you can trust. Whatever your horse needs is available at Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. Visit the retail outlet in Streetsboro, Ohio, or order online at BigDWeb.com. Most orders ship that day, or call 1-800-321-2142. Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. Three-year-old Colton Gelding Trotters on the track for the Green Shoe Bluegrass Series. First division kicks off the 50-cent pick five. We have a pick five carryover, $5,710, a $20,000 guaranteed pool. The pick five here this afternoon. What is Shadrach out of her? Ron Burke trains for Elite Trotting, Matt Kikati. Number two is King Alfonso. Ogus Fonstedt, the trader driver and the co-owner with Bender Sweden, Little E LLC, and Douglas Sipple. Three is Beyond Kronos, Jim Campbell trains, Andy McCarthy in the bike for Jeffrey and Michael Snyder. Four, Maester Rabin, Marcus Melander trains, Tim Dietrich drives for SRF Stable. The five is Beads, Perry Ingblom trains for Renee Spar, Brian Sears. Number six, EL Ideal, Ocus Fonstead trains for Imp and Best, Andy Miller. In the seven, it's academic. Ron Burke trains for the Burke Racing Stable. Bill Donovan, Joe Spronko, the Hatfield Stables. Chris Page is in the Asalki. That is your field for the second race. There are no changes. Race two, again, that pick five carryover, $5,710. $20,000 guaranteed pool in your total pick five today. We have only one change in the sequence on the balance of the card. In fact, it's in the fifth race, scratch seven, sea of life. Once you get to the fifth race, take out seven C of life. That is your only change here. The big pick five, it's just a few minutes away. All right, Gabe Pruitt, we've got fireworks right off the bat in the very first race on this Sunday afternoon here at the Red Mile. You sounded surprised when you uh, hit them, when they hit the teletimer there and Cattle Wash had equaled the world record 146 and four. Is that just a portent of things to come today? Who knows? First of 12 consecutive stakes, Dave. That's a great way to kick off the card. I, I didn't necessarily see a world record equal to performance coming, but uh, here we are, and uh, what a way to kick off the day. What a perfect trip and drive from Dave Miller. And you could tell in the final few yards of that race that he knew how fast he was going, and he did ask for a little bit more. So it was a, a, a superb mark that will uh, live with Bill Donovan's homebred son of some beach somewhere, equaling his sire's world record. So congratulations to those connections and the Burke Brigade. 
On we roll to race two, and we switch over to the trot here for this division of the bluegrass. It's the three-year-old trotting colts and geldings here, and the star performer here most likely is Beads. And in case you want to take a little uh, idea of, of what the world record is, well, it was set by six-pack, 149-1. and one. We'll see if Beads can go that fast. From what I've seen, Gabe, this is a very talented horse that's capable of any number. You know, I agree uh, completely, Dave. He got to hook up some very short fields here locally in that uh, Kentucky Sire Stakes program, just a couple of fields of four, even at the final. Incredibly, there were only five Colts uh, in that uh, event. Uh, but Beach did uh, all he needed to do. It was so handy. He won as easily as it looks on uh, paper each and every start here uh, in the local Sire Stakes action. So uh, it is a step up today. He is taking on uh, a few um, uh, more talented Colts, so uh, you would think. And a couple of Colts today that were good here last year for Team Sponstead. Exactly. Now, this race honors the Green Shoe Syndicate and Hanover Shoe Farms. And, of course, Green Shoe was one of the star performers in this bluegrass last year. Uh, he was a winner in 149-4. and four. The other division winner was his stablemate, Green Manalishi. So Marcus Melander certainly knows how to get one ready. But Oka Svonstead, now he, tell me about this. King Alfonso, he's the kind of horse that goes a good mile every once in a while, but I keep waiting for him to take that next step to become an elite trotter. I agree, and, and he really took that step here last year, day 52 flat in a Grand Circuit Stakes victory, but we really haven't seen him follow it up uh, with a breakout performance yet at the age of three, so will the return to the Red Clay uh, help uh, King Alfonso step up his game? I think that's the question here. Uh, we'll see. I did use him uh, close in my business. He's got that good tactical speed. I think he'll get out of there, uh, end up with a nice trip here at some point when it's all said and done in behind. Uh, the big favorite beads. Another uh, colt that won here last year was Maester Raymond uh, for uh, Mr. Melander, three-year-old son of uh, Andover Hall for the, the SRF stable. That's uh, Leonard Agron. It was a good, uh, good day for uh, Melander last year. But, you know, you have to question this horse's form coming into it. He got some time off. He qualified here. Did you see that qualifier, or do we know anybody who did? I did not see it. Uh, looks pretty good on paper. But, uh, Dave, he's missed over a month. He's made breaks in three out of his last four starts. I just can't be certain uh, that he's headed back in the right direction, uh, particularly if he plays up there at a short price. Right now he's a co-second choice, so if I was playing uh, exotics at this spot, I may try and uh, beat him uh, underneath here and behind what is going to be a prohibitive favorite of Beads. Yeah, Beads right now on the board at 1-5, to five, and I think we have a pretty good idea of what the strategy will be. This is just a pure speed horse. Uh, he did have some good off-the-pace efforts uh, earlier on this summer at the Meadowlands, so he's capable of being adaptable, but since he went on Lasix, it's been all speed all the time. Yes, it has been. Do want to remind everyone that pick five carryover day, 5,700 and change. That money you see at the top, that's new money. So we're already uh, quickly approaching the $20,000 mark. It's going to go well north of that huge pull forth cover here at the pick five. Now, you and I both know for the gamblers out there, we're not betting one to five shots to win. So we need to try and hit the exacta or the try or the superfecta. You and I both landed on the same horse for second, as will many of the fans here. The other Svonstad horse, E.L. Ideal, took his lifetime mark right here at the Red Mile last year. Yes, he did. Very similar uh, as his stable mate. Although I think he uh, ideal has put together a little bit more of a solid resume this season in terms of hanging with some good stakes company. He, he tracked Amigo Voldo in that uh, Sire Stakes final last out of Philly. Ended up a nice rudder up there. Uh, he's been uh, doing some good work there on the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes circuit. And he's got early speed. Yet another here today with early speed. I think the two, five, six, all going to be blasting. And what about the uh, Colt there on the outside? The uh, set of Uncle Peter, Chris Page, in town here for the drive. He's in the upcoming Lexington mixed sale here for the Burke Brigade. He is part of the preferred equine consignment. He is hip number 989. So write that down if you uh, feel like you like what you see today. And, you know, Bill Donovan, he's one of the co-owners on here with the uh, Burke Brigade, Joe Sabraco and the Hatfield Stables. So he could try to sweep the double as an owner. And I'll tell you what, the performance he turned in a couple days before the jug last week in his Ohio Breeders' Championship was dominant. Yes, it was. He's had to take on uh, really a, a tough crop of Ohio Colts. We've talked about that Ohio breeding program just really leaps and bounds uh, better over the last few seasons uh, than what we've known in the past, Dave. Uh, it, uh, action uncle. Uh, in fact, one of the Colts there at the Buckeye State for Virgil Morgan. He, uh, in my mind, could go with any three-year-old trotter uh, in the country. So its academics been chasing him around quite a bit. But he's done some good work. First or second, eight of ten already, well over $210,000. He has been a very nice colt all summer long. All right, Mr. Pruitt, there was over 16000 in that pick five pool of new money when it went off the screen. I see the uh, Dream Foundation starting gate is ready to roll. Hey, if Bede sets a world record, I'm running out there to get some, re some reaction. All right, that sounds great, Dave. Last chance here, final boarding golf. The pick five, post time for race two. Starter call.
Trotters lined up the first division of the Green Shoe Bluegrass Series. Of course, Green Shoe's highly anticipated first crop arrives in 2021. Stands at the Hanover Shoe Farms in Pennsylvania. Second race kicks off the uh, pick five, a field of seven. They are on game. And they're off and trotting. Maester Raymond left the uh, gate sharply from the center. E.L. Ideal also spreading out to, as well as his stablemate King Alfonso as they are working at that opening turn. E.L. Ideal right to the uh, top. He'll loop past King Alfonso. It's academics underway from that uh, far outside post. He's pressing on there for a page in the early stages. It's the big favorite, Beach. Floats wide fourth. He'll move past Maester Raven. At the opening turn, Shadrach Hedifer's out trot again sixth. And beyond Croto set the uh, back. They sort themselves out through a quick opening marker. 27 and one. It's academic. Has taken over the uh, top from E.L. Ideal, but uh, Metal Dunn contend with the uh, pocket, so it's a give and go. E.L. Ideal will the zip back up and around. It's academic. King Alfonso. Titans in third. Beads at one to five is tracking the early action from the fourth spot in front of Maester Raven. Shadrach Hedever is next and beyond Croto still at the tail of the field. They trot past the half here 54 and four, 27 and three in the second quarter. And it's E.L. Ideal, who shoulders a load onto the far turn. It's academic, keeping right with the leader, Ben Second. Now Beads works up uncovered to the outside for Sears. Just two links off the top with three-eighths to go. Maester Rabin will tee it up perfectly second over for Tietrich. King Alfonso saving ground fifth in front of Shadrach Hedever. Beyond Krotos made a break at the uh, back. It's E.L. Ideal who continues to front the field as they're off three quarters and 123. A nice trip second for its academic. Beads inching in there, but still two off the uh, top at the top of the uh, stretch. E.L. Ideal trying to maintain a margin there from its academic who's out for the uh, drive. King Alfonso will slip through. Beads made a break in stride. So the favorite Beads is off stride. It's academic and Page up on the outside trying to uh, push past E.L. Ideal. Ideal King Alfonso with the inside. It's academic down to the line. It's academic. We'll win it 150 and three. E.L. Ideal held second. King Alfonso third. Maester Raymond was fourth. Judges have posted the seven inch academic. Ten to one upsetter. To kick off the uh, pick five. Second of the six EL ideal. Two kicking Alfonso third. Number four, Maester Raven was fourth. Seven, six. Two, four. I'd officially race two. Fans do appreciate your support of that pick five pool. What over 31,000 new money wagered into that pick five today. Going to take that total pool up above the $37,000 mark, and it does begin with the 10 to 1 upsetter. It's academic. Returning track side for the Diamond Creek Farm, a wetter's presentation. This is its academic. Ron Burke sweeps the early double. Chris Page in town for the drive this afternoon. It's academic on with the Burke Racing Stable of Pennsylvania. Bill Donovan in for another here of Delray Beach. Joe Sprocco at the Hatfield Stables of Ohio. 
It's academic at three-year-old Bay Colt. He's by Uncle Peter from the Muscle Hill Mare Annapolis, bred by GBW Breeding Farms of Ohio. Fifth of the season, 11th overall. Career best clocking today, 150 and three for its academic. Its academic fresh off a world record performance in Delaware. He's settling in the upcoming Lexington Select Mix Sale, part of the preferred equine consignment. Hip 989 at the upcoming Lexington Mix Sale. It's academic. Fresh off a world record in Delaware and a lifetime best this afternoon. 150 and three. The upsetter, it's academic, is Ron Burke. Sweeps the first two races on the card. Greeting the Winnicott Access track side to make the trophy presentation. Madeline Melander, his mother of Marcus, Matias, Madeline Melander greets the wedding connections of its academic. Big, big five pool today, get over 37,000. Its academic kicks it off, 22, 20, 840, and $11. Second of the six, the yellow ideal, 660 at 820. Third of the two, King Alfonso, $16. Exact to $114.60. One dollar trifecta, seven six two, three hundred fifty one dollars thirty cents. Early double for a deuce, the Burke double fifty five dollars and sixty cents. Age of twenty cents super factor was one hundred forty six dollars forty two cents. Official run down for the second, Shadrach out of her fifth, two King Alfonso third, three Beyond Croto seventh, four Maester Raymond was fourth, five Bead sixth, number six EL Ideal second, seven it's academic three a winner. Rechecking 537, 462, one on the bottom. It's academic 150 and three. Third race up next, it is the first division of the American Ideal for the three year old pacing filly, sponsored by Brittany Stallion Management. Field of seven, no changes in the upcoming third race. It does kick off your early pick three, and it's in seven minutes. Stands at the head of her shoe farms in Pennsylvania. Second race kicks off the pick five, a field of seven. They are on game. And they're off and trotting. Maester Raymond left the uh, gate sharply from the center. E.L. Ideal also spreading out to, as well as his stablemate King Alfonso as they are working at that opening turn. E.L. Ideal right to the uh, top. He'll loop past King Alfonso. It's academics that away from that uh, far outside post. He's pressing on there for Page in the early stages. It's the big favorite, Beach Floats wide fourth. He'll move past Maester Raymond. At the opening turn, Shadrach Hedifer's out trotting in sixth. Beyond Croto set the uh, back. They sort themselves out through a quick opening marker. 27 and 1. It's academic. Has taken over the uh, top from EL Ideal, but uh, Miller not contend with the uh, pocket. So it's a give and go. EL Ideal will the zip back up and around. It's academic. King Alfonso. Titans in third. Beads at 1 to 5 is tracking the early action from the uh, fourth spot in front of Maester Raven. Shadrach Hedever is next, and Beyond Croto still at the uh, tail of the field. They trot past the half here, 54 and 4, 27 and 3 in the uh, second quarter. And it's EL Ideal, who shoulders a load onto the uh, far turn. It's Academic, keeping right with the leader, Ben Second. Now Beads works up uncovered to the outside for Sears, just two links off the top with three eighths to go. Maester Rabin will tee it up perfectly, second over for Tietrich. King Alfonso saving ground fifth in front of Shadrach Hanover. Beyond Kronos made a break at the uh, back. It's EL Ideal who continues to front the field as they're off three quarters and 123. A nice trip second for its academic. Beads inching in there, but still two off the uh, top at the top of the uh, stretch. EL Ideal trying to maintain a margin there from its academic who's out for the uh, drive. King Alfonso will slip through. Beads made a break in stride. So the favorite Beads is off stride. It's academic and Page up on the outside trying to uh, push past EL Ideal. Ideal King Alfonso with the inside. It's academic down to the line. It's academic. We'll win it 150 and three. Stay hungry. One of the most impeccably bred pacing stallions standing at stud. Stay hungry is a son of the legendary Sum Beat Somewhere out of world champion double millionaire Stay My hungry. Little Dragon. Stay hungry bred full books of exceptional mares in his first two seasons at stud. His foals are uniformly correct, attractive, and athletic, just like him. At an ultra reasonable stud fee of $6,000, there is no better value in the pacing stallion ranks than Stay Hungry. Standing at Hanover Shoe Farms.
Hickory Lane Horse Farm is the proud home of some of the Buckeye State's most popular stallions, like Dan Patch Champion, What the Hill? Breeders' Crown winner, Racing Hill. World Champion Trotter, Uncle Peter. And our recently retired elder statesman, McArdle. Be sure to visit our website, hickorylanefarm.com. Imperial Pacing Phillies on the track. First division of the American Ideal. Bluegrass Series worth $78,200. Kicks off the early pick three. What is baby? You're the best. Linda Toscato trains. Dave Miller drives for Richard and Joanne Young. Number two, Peaky Sneaky. Nancy Tactor trains. Scott Zero on the board for Howard and Judith Taylor. At the order by stable. Three is Hen Party. Tony Gadania trains for Crawford Farms Racing. Tim Tietrich. Four Petticoat Business. Brian Brown trains. Dexter out of the uh, bike for Michael Robinson. Robert Bendetto. RBH Ventures in the uh, Gilbelly Stable. Number five is Reflect With Me. Tony Gadania trains for the Brittany Farms and Brad Grant with Andy McCarthy. Six Boundless Dragon. Kelly O'Donnell trains for the Emerald Highlands Farm. Brett Miller. And seven is Sea Dog Lady. Ron Burke trains out of Jingron Drives for Dale Tao. There's your field for the third race. Kicks off the early pick three. We'll go to the post in just a few minutes for the third. Well, Gabe Pruitt, we've run two races on this spectacular Sunday program, and you and I don't have a winner yet, so we better pick up our game here, starting with the third, the American Ideal Division of the Bluegrass for the three-year-old pacing fillies. And this is one of the races today that I've been most been looking forward to because there's three or four of them that can win it, and they all look pretty good on paper. Let's begin with number one, Baby You're the Best, who was the six-to-one upset winner of the Kentucky Sire Stakes Final, the brush and crush, and it was a big, big mile for Dave Miller, 149-3. Yes, it was, and uh, she is very good. She's been very good all season long. Uh, maybe you're the best. Uh, what it handled, you know, we all expected Reflect With Me to go by that day. She was five cents on the dollar, in fact, but uh, maybe the best. Uh, you know, well-rated once she made the lead there and had plenty in the tank. Uh, Reflect With Me maybe just not quite on top of her game, but still not to discount uh, what was a huge effort. Uh, by baby, you're the best. And uh, to pass along a note here, our man Hollywood Hayden has just sent me over a great note today. The 15th anniversary of American Ideals, 147-4 and four world record performance. We all remember that. I believe uh, first drive in the career of driver Mark McDonald here at the Red Mile. Uh, a faster mark that year, Dave, than uh, Horse of the Year Rock and Roll had ever had. So American Ideal, we all remember that wonderful performance here in Lexington 15 years ago. I was a teller on the main line downstairs. <laughs> it's amazing how you can remember where you were at particular moments like that. We got to watch that replay uh, a couple of nights ago. Number two is Peaky Sneaky, and she sure has a chance uh, after returning from Canada with a win in her fan Hanover elimination and then a pretty good third from a tough spot uh, in the final behind Party Girl Hill. Another couple of good solid efforts in the jugette. Nobody was going to beat Party Girl Hill that day. Peaky Sneaky made a good race of it on the final turn to get within a couple, within a length, I think. And she still held well. I give her a good chance in here with the Lasix back on the big track. 
I think so as well in that first heat of the uh, jug out uh, worth noting she just never got a chance to race there uh, that was a, a great job there I knew you're on the front that day and that uh, made sure that uh, Piggy Sneaky could really never find clearance as she ended up being a runner up there beating three quarters of a length as you said trip just didn't work out in the bottle no one beating party girl Hill that day she attacked first up took a lot of the worst of it there uh, but still a good solid effort to uh, hold a third I, I like her stretching back out of the big track as well we've seen her put in several big efforts over the uh, big tracks uh, all summer a uh, dancy tactor here daughter betters delight uh, Zeron. it's back in the bike again today Number three, Hen Party, one of two in here for trainer Tony Alanya, the New York Sire Stakes champion in dominating fashion. But what kind of year is she having? Nine for seven. She was a pretty good two-year-old, but she's really blossomed as a sophomore. You know, she has, Dave. And we've seen so many of these horses come off that New York circuit and really do big things. I know at uh, Caesars Classic Night there at Hoosier Park, we saw several of the New York champions perform very well with the move back to the big track. I think we could see the same here from Hen Party. I slotted her in second. She rides a full race win streak into today. Uh, I think she is uh, obviously a very talented daughter of role with Joe. Uh, and again, even against open stakes company, those New York breads seem to really uh, step up. And uh, sometimes they don't get a lot of respect uh, as they should at the board, but uh, Hen Party's getting plenty right now, the 9-5 to five favorite. Yeah, this daughter of role with Joe deserves respect. And we know she can handle the big track, too. Her one leg of the New York Sire Stakes, but on the 7-8s at Vernon, produced a 150-2 win. She did win at the Meadowlands last year as a freshman in uh, 52 and change. She's owned by the Crawford Farms. And we remind everybody we're going to speak to Michelle Crawford a little bit later on in the card after her Ramona Hill uh, goes to the gate. Uh, she just uh, hinted that she's going to have a surprise announcement for all of us. So we uh, await that with uh, bated breath. Number five is Reflect With Me. Yes, she suffered her first defeat of the year in the Kentucky Sire Stakes final. She took it to uh, Baby You're the Best, but just could not get by. Uh, an extra week off here to uh, hopefully maybe resume a winning streak. Yeah, I still have to give her the edge, Dave. I think in terms of talent, uh, she has um, put herself maybe at the top of the uh, class. Uh, yes, it was a loss last out, five cents on the dollar, so maybe just a bit of disappointment, but uh, still a lot on paper, 26-3 and three home. Uh, the runner-up, but maybe just not quite on top of her game there in the Kentucky Sire Stakes model. But uh, with her resume, all the uh, great things we've seen uh, reflect with me during the past, I have to give her the edge. I, I like her style. I think it suits this racetrack very well. We've mentioned it many times, the uh, fairest racetrack in North America, I think, uh, in terms uh, to set things up for a closer. I think she'll work from off the uh, pace again today and uh, reflect with me two to one. That is a shockingly big number. It's been a long time since we've seen uh, that type of price and reflect with me. I remember when she won the Mistletoe Chalet back in uh, July and she was 8-1. to one. That was an amazing rally. She is best from off the pace, so consider that uh, in your race strategy. The other drivers know that as well. I don't think we'll see her anywhere near the lead today, so she will be grinding into it. So, can Baby You're the Best steal it? I don't know. We'll find out. Reflect with me. We'll try to grind her down. The George Siegel Brittany Farms homebred, he co-owns with uh, Brad Grant, so we'll see how this one turns out. If for some reason you are not alive in the pick five after race number two well you can start a pick three right here The Dream Foundation starting gate has moved into position. It's post time. This afternoon's third race. Starter call. 
First division of the American Ideal. Number one basic sire in the state of New York. The New York sire stakes both earnings and race wins five years in a row. Stands at the Blue Chip Farms of New York. It's the American Ideal. Sponsored by Brittany Stallion Management. Three-year-old pacing. Fedley's lined up at this afternoon's third race. Kicks off the early pick three. First division of the American Ideal. Field of seven. They are on game. And they're off. Reflect with me. Took it early a peak there, but she will go back off as Peaky Sneaky. Sprints on through Fedley's dead and towards the inside. Onto the opening turn. Baby, you're the best. Out well there from second. Hen party is third. Reflect with me. Tucked early into the fourth spot for the Petticoat Business. Boundless Dragon is next. Sea Dog Lady at the back. They circle the Tattersaw's turn. Peaky is sneaky up top early. Baby, you're the best. Tracks from second. The quarter just 28 seconds. Very moderate but tempo there as Hidden Party rides in the third spot. She's five links off the top. Reflect with me is anxious in the fourth spot. She's at a tight rein from McCarthy. Petticoat Business follows fifth in front of Boundless Dragon. And out the back, Sea Dog Lady. No change in position. Still in straight alignment past the 3 8 mark as they work their way to the half mile. And it's Peaky Sneaky. Still on the point, baby, you're the best. Looks over from second, Hen Party, the New York Sire Stakes champion. Riding in third, nothing yet from Reflect With Me. She's still very patient at this point in the fourth. Still six lengths off the top as the race passed the half here in just 56 seconds. So it's a leisurely tempo for Peaky Sneaky. The tactical advantage there as the Phillies make their way onto the far turn. Baby, you're the best is second. Hen Party. Well, now angle wide from a third. Petticoat Business save ground there as Reflect With Me is in a fifth. They race to the top of the stretch. Peaky Sneaky continues to front the field past three quarters, 123 and three. Top of of the stretch, Peaky Sneaky looking to sprint clear down. She's three on top. Hen Party rallies up on the outside. Baby, you're the best. Tries to hang in. Now reflect with me as clearance, and she begins to find her best stride up on the far outside. But it could be too late here as Peaky Sneaky is maintaining a four-length margin. Baby, you're the best, and reflect with me for minor, minor spoils, but it's all Peaky Sneaky wrapped up here. Well-rated Peaky Sneaky to score. Baby, you're the best second. Reflect with me third. Hen Party fourth, 149 and one. Judges have posted 2153 at officially Peaky Sneaky, a final quarter, 25 and 3. 2153 at official in the third.
Returning track side for the Diamond Creek Farm Wetters presentation. This is Peaky Sneaky. Dancy Tactor, the treader, Scott Zeron. With a heads up drive here on the front, Peaky Sneaky. Back half 53 and one, final quarter 25 and three. Peaky Sneaky is owned by Hammered Taylor, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Judith Taylor, also Pennsylvania. Dot Morgan there to receive the trophy on behalf of Howard and Judith Taylor. Picky Sneaky also owned by the Order by Stable of uh, Sweden. She's a three-year-old Bay Philly by Better's Delight from the Rock and Roll Hat of Her Bear World of Rock. Bred by the White Birch Farm, New Jersey. Picky Sneaky's fourth win of the season, sixth overall. Equal to your career best this afternoon, 149 at 1. Presenting the trophy to the Wedding Connections on behalf of the American Ideal, Brittany Stallion Management Connections. That's their director of sponsorships, Cindy Silverson. Of course, works for Mr. George Siegel, owner of Brittany Farms. And all of the Brittany Connections associated with the great American Ideal as Peaky Sneaky takes the first division, 149 and 1. Results are official. The price is up. Peaky Sneaky, 1040, 460 and 220. Second to the one, baby, you're the best. 360, 210. Third to the five, reflect with me, 210. Exacto was $23. The $1 trifecta, $25.60. 20 cents superfecta, $11.38. Official rundowns for the third race. Baby, you're the best. Second. Number two, Peaky Sneaky, the race winner. Three, Hen Party, fourth. Four, Petticoat Business, fifth. Five, Reflect with me, third. Number six, Boundless Dragon, sixth. Seven, Sea Dog Lady, seventh. Rechecking, two, one, four, five, three, six. Seven on the bottom, Peaky Sneaky. Takes the third to learn a little more about Peaky Sneaky. Right down the road, Dave Brower is standing by with winning trader Nancy Tactor. Thanks very much, Gabe. It's my first chit-chat with Nancy Tactor of the Grand Circuit Meet, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Peaky Sneaky here. Now, she was a very good two-year-old, but she's made a big step forward, I think, at three. She's had so many tough trips in all of these big stakes races. Today was her day. Yeah, you know, I've kind of been waiting for her to get the chance to win this actual stakes race because she's kind of been knocking on the door, but she's a super nice filly. She's a little bit of an overachiever. You know, she gives you everything she's got every time that she's on the track, and there's nothing else I can say about her but good things. Well you took her all the way up to Canada for the fan handover. She raced well twice and you took her to Delaware, Ohio. You keep running into Party Girl Hill. We've got to avoid that scenario from now, huh? Yeah, I mean obviously Party Girl Hill is a really nice filly so if we could avoid her that, you know, that plays to our advantage. But there were some nice fillies in there today and I think that Peaky held her own today. What were you thinking when the teletimer spit out 56 flat for the half? Um, that you better get rolling because she's actually a little bit more strong than she's quick So I didn't want to invite anybody um, in on speed. So but um, it, I mean she's a strong filly and she's gonna like I said She's gonna do what she can do finishing. off the performance today Can we expect to see her next week and then maybe on to the breeders crown? Yeah, that's the plan Okay, now let me ask you about last night I know one of your all-time favorite horses is Kissing in the Sand. She had a spectacular performance up at Dayton and she made up a ton of ground to blow by the horse of the year yeah, um, she's finally kind of getting back into her own. It's taken her a little bit of a while to kind of really graduate into the open mares. Um, but I think she's kind of accomplished that now. And she seems to like the cooler weather. She started off the year, you know, really good. And then she kind of tailed off a little bit midsummer when it got really hot. She's got a lot of allergy problems. So um, the cooler weather definitely helps her. But she was really tough last night. And like you said, she's one of my favorite oh. all time. So. She came roaring off cover and you just knew she was going to win. Now, listen, you know, I can't have you here without asking about the stable star who will perform a little bit later on this afternoon. Tall, dark stranger. He's passed every test thrown at him. He's been more and more impressive. Where do we stand going into the race today? Um, he trained super this week. You know, he kind of, he makes my job easy. He's just such a nice horse all around. You know, he's good gated, great manners. I, he's fast, strong. He's got every attribute that you would really want in a racehorse. So I'm looking forward to racing him today for okay. sure. Okay, we look forward to that as well. Peaky Sneaky takes the uh, American Ideal Bluegrass Series for the three-year-old fillies, and she equals her lifetime mark of 149-1. and one. 
is in a fifth. They race to the top of the stretch. Peaky Sneaky continues to front the field past three quarters, 123 and three. Top of the stretch, Peaky Sneaky looking to sprint clear down. She's three on top. Hen Party rallies up on the outside. Baby, you're the best. Tries to hang in. Now reflect with me as clearance, and she begins to find her best stride up on the far outside. But it could be too late here as Peaky Sneaky is maintaining a four length margin. Baby, you're the best, and reflect with me for minor, minor spoils, but it's all Peaky Sneaky wrapped up here. Well rated Peaky Sneaky to score. South Wind Farms is the premier breeding facility in New Jersey and is home to top trotting sire Muscle Hill. South Wind also stands the world champion Walner and 2018 Breeders' Crown champion Tactical Landing. Southwind also has a beautiful standard bread nursery in upstate New York, where the rolling hills provide an ideal setting for foals to grow up strong and healthy for the lucrative New York Sire Stakes program. Bar hopping son of Muscle Hill is making serious waves with his first crop of 2022 year olds. Over one half of his foals have raced as of July 15th, and one half of those are winners, led by stakes winners in range, and it's in range, in front, in and pub crawl. And it's pub crawl in one. A majestic looking son of the greatest trotting stallion ever who has already proven his siring ability. Bar hopping is undoubtedly the next generation. Standing at Hanover Shoe Farms. To all our sports caretakers, this one's for you. It's the 2020 Caretaker Cup, sponsored by Leah Chevry and Art Subrod's Fair Island Farm of Versailles, Kentucky. These awards will be presented to the caretakers of the Red Mile Grand Circuit Stakes winners. But we thank all of you whose hard work and dedication brings out the best in our horses. Three-year-old trotting fillies on the track. First division of the bar hopping bluegrass series. Purse of $70,200. Post parade sponsored by Mr. 146. Always be Mickey. No changes in the fourth one is Violet Stride. Mark Harder trains. Brian Sears in the bank for Emilio and Maria Rosati. Number two, love a, a good story. Julie Miller trains. Andy Miller up for the Binsky Stables. Kentucky Anna Racing Stable. Daniel Bluff. Three is Pabham. Nancy Tactor trains. Dexter Dunn wears the colors of Diamond Creek Racing. Number four is Sands Defoe. Ron Burke trains for the Burke Racing Stable. Crawford Farms Racing. Jerry and Teresa Silva. Purdell and Libby. Weaver Bruce Shibby with Matt Kikati. The five is Next Level Stuff. Jim Campbell trains for the Run the Table Stables. Tim Dietrich. Number six, Sweet Shirley May, to bet go Chechade train, out of Jingra, where the colors of the Lindy Farms and Money Market Breeders. Seven is Salisbury Hill, Rick Zeron trains for the Rick Zeron Stables, Albert Taylor, Rogan Stables, Bill Donovan, Scott Zeron. Rather got race four, that's eight, Common Sense, Hocus Fonstead, the trader driver and co owner of the SRF Stable. That's the field for the fourth race, there are no changes, a few minutes from race four.
Race four up next here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon in Lexington, Kentucky at the Red Mile. This is a trot series, the Bluegrass series for the three-year-old uh, fillies as well. Gabe, just want to give a little bit of love again, all of the people and folks that support the Red Mile throughout the season here. The Hanover Shoe Farms, the Deo Valenti Farms, Wire to Wire Wealth Management, got to meet Matt Franklin the other day. The Diamond Creek Farm, we saw Adam Bowden walking around. And a little bit later on, uh, we're going to get to talk to uh, Tom Grossman of the Blue Chip Farm. Everybody on pins and needles as the Lexington selected sale begins tomorrow night. Over to race four again. Good group of uh, the sophomore trotting fillies here. Low price right now. Nancy Tactor looking to go back into the winner's circle. Nine to five on Pan Am. Now I've really liked this horse throughout the season. Uh, Gabe, homebred here for the Diamond Creek Racing Stable, but I see a lot of seconds and thirds. That was my concern today. Very talented filly, daughter, father, Patrick, because she's been very nice all season. She's not missed the board, but my concern is the win resume. There's been a couple of times I thought maybe she would pop past here locally, uh, going back uh, particularly there two starts ago. Uh, she was just second best here. Although it was a sprint home, I don't want to be too hard on her there, but just one for nine. So up at the top spot, uh, I'm going to take a swing to beat Panda, but a very, very talented a daughter of Father Patrick that uh, goes for the team of Diamond Creek. And keep in mind, Dexter Dunn will be wearing the colors of the Diamond Creek Farm, the uh, white with the blue uh, accents. Number one, Violet Stride up there at a big price. But uh, again, keep a close eye because Violet Stride will uh, be in that mixed sale on October 10th as hip number 975. So uh, take a good, good look. She's had a tough year. You know, she was a very, very good two-year-old winning three times. But so far, she's 0 for 10. I don't know, maybe that's why they want to sell her. Yeah, she's been okay, sort of a fringe player on the uh, national stake scene. I think at the age of uh, three, Dave, I'm sure the connections were hoping for a bit better, especially after picking up a huge stakes win in 52 flat here as a, a freshman. But uh, you see, she's a very handy in her own right, though. She's still picking up uh, some nice checks. She's put it on 26 and change two back. Uh, I think we had the same opinion heading into today. I thought Violet Stride would likely get away somewhere close, save some ground, perhaps underneath in uh, terms of your exotics. Last year in the Bluegrass Freshman Division, number two, Love a Good Story, was excellent for Andy and Julie Miller here. She enters today off an untimely break in that New York Sire Stakes final. But I think you got the same tweet as I did from our buddy Tomas Svensson. This is his best bet of the day. And he has been red hot. Uh, speaking of uh, Thomas, uh, I think uh, he's probably involved at the pick five pool today, so I do want to give an update. Uh, over $31,300 new money wagered in, Dave, through two legs. Just 214 live dollars remain. So we've uh, eclipsed a lot of that live money, mine included, uh, in the big five. But uh, love a good story. Uh, no one loves a good story more than me. I haven't heard one of this filly, but uh, she made a break last time at Yonkers. Uh, again, I give just so much respect to those horses competing on that New York Sire Stakes circuit. I think at times they don't get the respect they deserve, uh, but they do uh, join back at the Grand Circuit stage, although love a good story is getting get tons of it right now. Seven to five at the board, and it, she loves to win day. That's what I like. 12 of 18, 5 of 8 this year, 7 of 10 as a freshman. She took a nice stakes win here last fall, 52 and change. Team Orange Crush with a stakes winner already here in the Grand Circuit Pub Crawl. Pub Crawl is a, a daughter of bar hopping, the namesake here of the fourth race. Yeah, I love a good story. We know she likes the track, so no worries about her handling the big surface. The price, though, like you said, uh, as we speak, a little bit low. Number four, Sands Defoe up next for the Burke Brigade, and it's not often that trainer Ron Burke makes a mistake but he did when he entered Sands Defoe during Little Brown Jug Week. She was supposed to be in the bucket, and Ron wrote the wrong race down. He rolled the old oak in bucket, and you know what? After a bunch of horses broke, she won anyway. You know, I felt awful for him. It worked out so poorly there, Dave. He only picked up about 42,000 <laughs> with that mistake. So uh, hats off. We've seen these uh, the Burke Barn there firing at all cylinders. Already a couple of wins on the uh, day. Sands Defoe. I uh, sort of overlooked her there in Delaware. I know she had a nice trip, but I was pretty impressed. I know you were as well. She got home there 28 and 01. Now, this is a step up against a bit better group overall today. I think it's a deeper group uh, for Sands to vote, but again, the barn firing at all cylinders. We saw its academic rolled in there from uh, a fresh win at uh, Delaware and dominate. Uh, in the second race, so who knows what we can see from Sands DeVoe. Obviously, she is in sharp form right now as well. Back in against her own kind, Matt Kikaley has been her regular driver throughout the season. He had a, a nice winner yesterday for the Burke Brigade. <clears throat> uh, Ron's Perlman, I think it was. Number five, next level stuff is up next. Jim Campbell and the, the homebred for Scott Farber. He has had a winner already in the Grand Circuit meet. This is a filly that just likes to win. She's 10 for 19 lifetime. And if you took those two nose decisions that she lost over the course of the summer, she could be seven for nine. 
And you've got to give a lot of respect to Pennsylvania circuit. So tough. She took her shot there from the inside post. That is not an easy post to make the lead from there in Philly, uh, Dave, that start two back. So she ended up on top uh, from post one. That uh, you really have to hustle out of there uh, to get the lead there from uh, that inside position at uh, Philly. Dispatched an easier group there, the Liberty Bell last out. But uh, she's been right there against uh, the National Stakes Company all season long. Took her shot, in fact, at the Hamiltonian Oaks uh, as well. So, Again, a logical contender here and a pretty good group of uh, three-year-old trotting fillies. Usable live long shot on your screen right now. That's Yannick Gingra in the colors of the uh, Antonacci family. Uh, sweet Shirley May for Domenico Cecchere. She's just got to get into the game because she doesn't have much early speed. What's well, first time Yannick, and sometimes we see Yannick get these uh, horses fired up, and he will put them in position when they a lot of times do not show early speed. So will that be the case here? That's my question. As you said, a big price for a first time Yannick here on Six Sweet Shirley May. Last year, Common Sense also won here as a two-year-old for Team Svonsted. And uh, last year, Svonsted won one of these divisions as a three-year-old with Beautiful Sin. I know you remember her. She had missed like a month, and she had just moved to, into Oka's barn here. She's recently returned to form, but against lesser company on the half-mile track. That's the question. Can she step back up? She has proven she can to the Paso earlier this summer. Uh, she was pretty good as well, but uh, we'll see the tactics today. She's got some early speed if Svonsted opts to use it from that outside position. All right, Ken. Pan Am snap that second and third itis. She's six to five to do so to put Nancy Tactor back in the winner's circle. And it is post time for the bar hopping bluegrass series. Bar hopping selling a second crop this fall off to already a great start with the first crop. Just 61 foals are part of the first crop already. Stakes winners, including a grand circuit winner here just a couple of days ago in pub crawl. Two-year-old trotting filly, so check out the second crop of a bar hopping. He stands at the head of her shoe farms of Pennsylvania. Starter call. Three-year-old trotting fillies lined up. First division of the bar hopping bluegrass series. A field of eight. They're on game. And uh, they're off. Next level stuff goes to spreading out from the sitter. Violet Stride protecting uh, her inside position is Padam. Also looks for good early position out of the opening turn. Common Sense is off stride. Common Sense made a break early. Diedrich and next level stuff up to a take over the lead, but it's uh, Padam and Dunn who continue wide there, and it's Padam, the favorite, surging for the top from next level stuff. Vada Stride, away well in the third spot. Love a good story. Tracks in a fourth in front of Sands Defoe. Sweet Shirley Bay is next in front of Salisbury Hill. And at the back after the best cue, that is Common Sense. Quarter, just 28 seconds, says the 7-5 to five favorite. Padam calls he has shots across the back stretch. Next level stuff in tight pursuit second. Violet Stride looking over the uh, top pair third in front of a love a good story. The second choice is fourth and opted to sit in there for a Miller. As Sands Defoe comes underway to the outside for Kakali. Sweet Shirley May will set it up second over on the outside for Jingra as Soulsbury Hill saves ground and far back to Cobb and Sins, about 10 links behind the uh, top flight. They trot past the half here in 55 and 4. 27 and 4 in the second quarter. Panham continues on the point with three eighths to a go. Next level stuff is at a picture perfect trip in the second spot. Sands Defoe is working up uncovered right now, just two links off the uh, top. Sweet Shirley Bay tracking up that move. She's now fourth as Violet Stride begins to uh, gap out slightly fifth. That's to the detriment of Love a Good Story. They trot off three quarters and 123 and four. Padham turns for home with the lead. Next level stuff is now swings out there in tight traffic second. Sands Defoe tries to hang in. Four outside moving up. Sweet Shirley May. Next level stuff up and out of the pocket to attack Padham. And Padham is given way here to next level stuff. Far outside, love a good story. Was a free late. Love a good story is rattling, but it's next level stuff to win. Love a good story was second. Panham third. Sweet Charlie May fourth and 151 and three.
Judges have posted the five next level stuff. Five to two, third choice. That officially first. Second of the two, love a good story. Three, Panam third. The favorites, one, two, three, in inverted order. Six, Sweet Shirley May was fourth. Five, two, three, six, at officially race four. Returning track side for the Diamond Creek Farm. Winner's presentation. This is next level stuff. Jim Campbell, the trader. Tim Dietrich. Works out a perfect trip today. The bike for the win. Next level stuff. Owned and bred by the Run the Table Stables. Montvale, New Jersey. Next level stuff. A three-year-old daughter of Sebastian K. For the Cantab Hall Mayor, Nantab. It's her fifth of the season in 10 starts, 11th overall. The winning effort today, a career best clocking for next level stuff, 151 and 3. Greeting the Winter Connections track side, make the trophy presentation. That's Christina Tactor to present the trophy to the Winter Connections of next level stuff. Fourth race results are official. Next level stuff off is the third choice. She returns 740, 420, and 260. Second to the two, love a good story. 440, 240. Third to the three, Panem, 220. Exact $33.40. A $1 trifecta, $32.90. $0.20 superfecta, $40 even. Official rundowns in for the fourth race. Violet Stride, sixth. Number two, love a good story, second. Three, Panem, third. Number four, Sands to Bow, is seventh. Five next level stuff, the winner. Six Sweet Shirley May, fourth. Seven Salisbury Hill, fifth. Eight Common Sense, eighth. Rechecking top down at six, two, three, seven, one, four. Five at eight on the bottom. Next level stuff, 151 and three. Fans, if you are curious on our flags being at half staff today, we do want to remind you uh, once more that is in honor of National Fault and Firefighters Memorial Day. Governor Bashir ordering all flags at half staff today again it's National Fault and Firefighters Memorial Day. Our flags here at the Red Mile ought to bring that as well at half staff. The fifth race is up next. Scratch seven Sea of Life. That is the only change on the Sunday docket. Now once again take out the seven Sea of Life. The upcoming fifth race post time is at eight minutes. Three-year-old trotting fillies lined up. First division of the bar hopping bluegrass series. A field of eight. They are on game. And uh, they are off. Next level stuff goes to spreading out from the sitter. Violet Stride protecting uh, her inside position is Panem. Also looks for good early position out of the opening turn. Common Sense is off stride. Common Sense made a break early. Diedrich and next level stuff up to a take over the lead, but it's uh, Panem and Dunn who continue wide there, and it's Panem, the favorite, surging for the top from next level stuff. Vada Stride, away well in the third spot. Love a good story. Tracks in a fourth in front of Sands Defoe. Sweet Shirley Bay is next in front of Soulsbury Hill. And at the back after the miscue, that is Common Sense. Quarter, just 28 seconds, says the 7 to 5 favorite, Panem, causing his shots across the uh, back stretch. Next level stuff in tight pursuit, second. 
Vibe at Stride. Looking over the uh, top pair third and for the love of good story. The second choice is fourth and opted to sit in there for a Miller. His Sands Defoe comes underway to the outside for Kikaley. Sweet Shirley May will set it up second over on the outside for Jingra as Soulsbury Hill saves ground and far back to Cobb and Sins, about 10 links behind the uh, top flight. They trot past the half here in 55 and 4. 27 and 4 in the second quarter. Panham continues on the point with three eighths to a go. Next level stuff is at a picture perfect trip in the second spot. Sands Defoe is working up uncovered. Right now, just two links off the uh, top. Sweet Shirley Bay tracking up that move. She's now fourth as Violet Stroud begins to uh, gap out slightly fifth. That's to the uh, detriment of Love a Good Story. They trot off three quarters and 123 and four. Padham turns for home with the lead. Next level stuff is now swings out there in tight traffic. Second, Sands Defoe tries to hang in. Four outside moving up. Sweet Shirley May. Next level stuff up and out of the pocket to attack Padham. And Padham has given way here to next level stuff far outside love a good story was a free late love a good story is rattling but it's next level stuff to win love a good diamond creek farm presents sweet lou the great white blaze with star power and charisma to spare fans far and wide success at the highest levels and that unique look that just says greatness oh, sweet lou how sweet it is Sweet Lou wins the TVG Free For All Final. Sweet Lou, the Great White Blaze, now standing at Diamond Creek Farm. Captain Treacherous, North America's dominant pacing stallion. Captain Phillies were one, two, Reflect three in the 2019 two-year-old Breeders' Crown. Reflect crowned. with me, 150 and three. As well as the 2020 Mistletoe Shally. Reflect with me, then Lion Sentinel, then Rocknificent, 149. The captain sired half of the 2020 Meadowlands pace starters, including Alleyweg Hanover. Alleyweg Hanover again. Standing at Hanover Shoe Farms. Art speak. The next generation of Western Ideal in Ontario. Two-year-old called Pacer of the Year in Canada and the United States. He's a multiple stakes winner, including the Governor's Cup, the Metro Pace, the Bluegrass Stakes, and the New Jersey Sire Stakes Finals twice. He's a proven sire of PA Stakes winners from two crops of racing age. Artspeak's first Ontario crop sells in 2020. Look at the full yearling sales for Artspeak Offspring. For more information, winbackfarm.com.